Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Sasha. Yes. A 45 year old male present to the ER with complaints of generalized tiredness since one month associated with numbness and paresthesias of bilateral upper limb and lower limb since three days. On our initial 10 second assessment, the patient was conscious oriented and obeying commands. Coming to airway, airway was patent. Coming to breathing, air and bilateral equal. Respiratory rate of 20 per minute, saturation of 98 percentage in room A. Coming to circulation, BP of 120 bar 80 millimeters of mercury. Coming to disability, GCS of 15 by 15, bilateral pupil equally reacting to light. Coming to exposure, temperature of 98.2 degree Fahrenheit. Coming to adjuncts of primary survey, we have taken a CBC CRP point of care which showed an HB of 4.5, platelet of 2.5 lakh, total count of 7000. Coming to ample history, a 45 year old male present to the ER with complaints of a history of uh, generalized tiredness since one month associated with uh, numbness and paresthesias of both upper limb and lower limb since three days. The patient also gives history of exertional dyspnea since two days. No history of any chest pain, palpitation, malina, hemoptysis. No history of any uh, slurring of speech, deviation of angle of mouth. No history of any drug intake. No history of any irritability, memory loss. Uh, the patient also gives history of a pure vegetarian diet. No history of similar episodes in the past. The patient is uh, not an alcoholic or a smoker. The patient is not on any regular medications. Last meal was taken at uh, 7.30 a.m. Coming to general examination, Pala was present, no actress, cyanosis, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. Coming to uh, oral examination, the patient had glossitis. Systemic examination, uh, CNS, GCS was 15 by 15, bilateral pupil equally reacting to light and moving all four limbs. CVS, S1, S2 present, no murmurs, respiratory system, airendry, bilateral equal. GIT, soft, non-tender, bowel sounds were present, no hepatosplenomegaly. At this point of time, we have sent all the routine investigations yes. and our CBC CRP point of care was showing a HB of 4.5. Okay. Uh, we want to differentiate between an acute or a chronic blood loss, but no features of any breathlessness, systemic examination wise, no Krebs were present mm -hmm. and no other features of cardiac failure. We take it as a chronic blood, lo blood loss. Chronic anemia? Chronic anemia, sir. And we have sent the workup for uh, anemia, sir. Okay. Uh, first, we have look, uh, looked the blood investigations. What CBCs. are the differential diagnoses you will suspect uh, in these type of cases? Uh, in this type of case, what are the differential diagnoses you suspect? Uh, Somebody is having uh, bilateral upper limb, lower limb numbness. Uh, like uh, short duration of history. Any electrolyte imbalances? Potassium. Potassium. Mm -hmm. Okay. TAA can be suspected. TAA. TAA. Stroke. Yes. Bilateral. Sensor, uh, not bilateral. Bilateral is not oh, possible. possible. Stroke. Peripheral neuropathies are not possible. Peripheral neuropathies. Okay. Then. What are the reasons for such presentation? Anemia is there, bilateral peripheral neuropathy is there. What are the differential diagnoses for that? Okay, you can uh, suspect when before getting investigation, you can suspect uh, uh, polyneuropathy like uh, inflammatory polyneuropathy like GBS. Yeah. But there is no clinical finding which tells you that patient is having a florid GBS. It can be a partial GBS or something else. Okay, electrolyte imbalance is possible, yeah. but there. Numbness is not very classical yeah. finding. You get ma mainly muscle weakness and muscle pain. Okay. Here you have patient who is having peripheral numbness, both yes. the upper limb and lower limb. Mm -hmm. And severe anemia, sir, which is a chronic anemia, you are telling. So, what are the differential diagnoses for that? For anemia with peripheral neuropathy, what are the differences? One is B12 deficiency. One is B12 deficiency, yeah. commonest in our country who is a uh, vegetarian diet. Commonest is that. Second. Oh, CKD patients. CKD patients can have similar picture. They can have both peripheral neuropathy. Maybe because of diabetes or uh, di chronic kidney disease itself can produce neuropathy. And they can also have uh, anemia. Then you are not thinking beyond that. That is a problem. 
there is a fixed diagnosis we are only sticking that to that diagnosis what toxicological substance can present with similar finding chronic dash poisoning lead, lead poisoning lead poisoning is one of the most important uh, condition chronic poisoning they can have peripheral neuropathy with anime because it affects the bone marrow okay so there is one condition that also have chronic history chronic peripheral but the character of neuropathy on uh, complete lab investigation may be totally different that is a different issue but they also have numbness weakness and uh, distal food drop like uh, symptoms okay okay continue so we went ahead with the evaluation of anemia sir uh, according to cbc crp uh, it was a single linear issue sir hmm. uh, first thing to lead to rbc sir hmm. then we went ahead with the other indices hmm. first we look at uh, whether it is a hypoproliferative or hyperproliferative anemia sir hmm. our reticulocyte proliferation index was 1.8 sir that okay. is less than yeah. 2.5 that is a hyperproliferative okay. anemia sir under the hyperproliferative anemia comes uh, normocytic microcytic and macrocytic okay. so we went ahead with the mcv and mch okay. mcv mcv was 115 sir that is normal very range high. is 80 to 100 so 105. macrocytic okay. like pictures sir so in macrocytosis uh, like picture again comes whether there is megaloblastic or no non megaloblastic so peripheral blood smear we have taken sir peripheral blood smear showed megaloblastic like picture sir mm-hmm. macrovalocytes were also present so it was a uh, macrocyte with megaloblast sir. Oh. so under that comes that vi- poisoning what will be the finding uh, basically stippling stippling will be there and it will not be like a ma- megaloblastic anemia it will be normocytic or microcytic anemia uh then we been had with uh, other differential diagnosis in uh, ma- macrocytosis with the megaloblast that is vitamin b12 deficiency folate deficiency in it drug in the, uh, like uh, those who inhibit dna synthesis like the al- and uh, alcohol can also produce okay. so we have sent the vitamin b12 level of this patient sir vitamin b12 level of the patient came to be 180 sir which was on 180. the lower side sir it's uh, a veget- purely vegetarian purely vegetarian diet sir so uh, we found the causes of vitamin b12 uh, so dietary intake is one of the causes uh, but at the same time patient also gives history of uh, abdominal pain abdominal discomfort also sir. and glossitis and other features were there we also plan to rule out pernicious anemia also in this okay. patient sir young patient rule out we have sent the antibodies sir mm-hmm. uh, the antibodies came to an anti intrinsic factor antibody we have sent sir that mm-hmm. came out to be negative okay. so we thought it to be vitamin b12 deficiency anemia sir okay. so we have started the patient on injection vitamin the cyanocobalamin 100 microgram daily 1000 uh, microgram daily okay. for one week okay. and uh, along uh, with the how you see also. the response suppose you are working in a uh, ordinary hospital you don't have facilities for because these investigations are costly vitamin b12 intrinsic factor all these things are very costly so you have a patient who is having anemia with uh, peripheral neuropathy who is having uh, vegetarian diet how you treat the patient without doing an investigation and find out the cause we can try vitamin b12 yeah. simplest method is give vitamin b12 1000 microgram two days 48 hours then what you will see you already told some production index is very low uh, reticular production so that you see after 48 hours if there is a significant rise in that then the diagnosis b12 deficiency okay only thing what we cannot make out is whether it is a intrinsic factor problem or a uh, like a reduced diet induced problem okay when you are giving iv we are bypassing the intrinsic factor okay you are directly giving if you try to give orally and if you are it is not getting corrected then it is intrinsic factor problem or some problem in the intestine that's why always try to give injection b12 because what is the problem if you don't correct this anemia faster suppose you don't correct it fast so cardiac take, failures uh, one is cardiac failure yeah. then what else can happen b12 uh, where all it affects it other than can happen the heart and atherosclerosis can be ah it can produce heart psychiatric manifestations homocysteine and uh, okay hyperhomocysteine and neuropsychiatric manifestations neuropsychiatric manifestation then ice uh, okay. ice huh optic neuropathy also optic can neuropathy. produce so 
the uh, the damage uh, which is produced by b12 deficiency if you are not correcting faster it will become permanent okay so later even if you correct the b12 the damage which is caused in the cns or nervous system will not be reversible okay so if possible you have to correct it faster the altered behavior dementia uh, optic neuropathy all these things are after sometimes it will become irreversible so as soon as possible we have to correct it okay what are the clinical findings of b12 deficiency normally uh, normally sir glossitis bifocular tongue can be mm. seen and paresthesias mm. both uh, upper limb and lower so limb. large fiber neuropathy or small fiber uh, large fiber neuropathy so large fiber that's why you are getting numbness yeah. and low vibration yeah. sense okay what is the m- main problem because of that suppose your posterior column sensations are lost what is the most important problem we can develop uh, subacute combination that is a different yeah. problem subacute combined degeneration will come to that it's a different problem suppose your peripheral nerves are not working properly you have peripheral neuropathy what any injury in the neck can cause infection so okay injury if you are diabetic you can have infections attacks yes attacks yes. that is most important thing what is the typical nature of peripheral neuropathy induced attacks here it is not an emergency medicine question but uh, some patients come with fall history of fall elderly individual come with history of fall with peripheral neuropathy what is a uh, what is a scenario they present to ed with the history of fall and the closed eyes when they close the eyes they fall down oh. because they are, we, your posture is maintained by your posterior column your uh, ears and your eyes okay so when you become old ears will not work properly only your peripheral sensations and eye will correlate at your position so once the position sense is lost in the lower limb and when you are closing your eyes normally they fall down okay that's why most of the patients while they wash their face they fall down that is the most common thing and ataxia is very very common okay then what test you do for that ataxia romberg test it's a romberg test okay then it's all basics we, we i am not asking big things okay romberg test you have to do then we have told about subacute combined degeneration of cord what is that uh, degeneration of the posterior column and the lateral spinal tract secondary to demyelination hmm so what will be the clinical finding uh is loss of uh, vibration proprioception can be there sir okay that is the first phase, first phase second phase pain temperature pain temperature, temperature uh, is not classically involved vibration sense is one pain temperature later can be involved but what is that subacute combined peripheral degeneration nerves, uh, that's uh, peripheral so, neuropathy that is what you are told the flexors will be uh, vibration sense is lost reflexes will be subacute combined degeneration of cord cord is involved what is which cord is involved spinal cord Spinal is involved so what will be there you have pyramidal signs associated with so patient will have rigidity and peripheral neuropathy but the problem is normally when there is a spinal cord involvement you have exacerbation in the deep deep tendon reflexes okay here the problem is since patient is having peripheral neuropathy deep tendon reflexes will not be exaggerated patient will have all findings of uh, spinal cord lesion like uh, rigidity so spasticity can be there difficulty in walking will be there but when you examine the reflexes all will be sluggish that is because of the peripheral neuropathy that creates some confusion okay which part of the spine this is commonly affecting cervical thoracic lumbar sacral thoracic okay so common area affected in a subacute combined degeneration is thoracic only okay so that will be the clinical finding but that occurs very late okay but if you don't treat the patient for some time this will this all these changes will become permanent that is a problem okay then what happened to the patient how will how will, how will you follow up this patient uh, we have so you have a patient who is because of dietary deficiency he has developed uh, b12 deficiency he has only developed anemia with peripheral neuropathy he has not developed dementia has not developed developed optic problem he has not developed spinal cord problem okay so how do you manage uh, we so you are given 1000 microgram of b12 in a, in your icu yes. response should be seen in 48 hours uh, then uh, we have given it for daily for one week sir. okay one weekly daily for one week should be given 
weekly for once weekly one for month. one month then you have to then give. monthly we have monthly for one and year you have, have to plan on giving oral year then orally you can try and yearly you have to continue uh, iv okay so that should mostly correct the issue should we give uh, folic acid along with this yes, folic acid. why folic acid so, what is the difference between folic acid and b12 in terms of uh, neuro neurological problem is he alcoholic no sir he is not an alcoholic okay so suppose this patient so patient is not taking proper diet so he has developed b12 deficiency he can also have folic acid deficiency what will happen if you are giving only b12 to this patient cycle in the pathway to complete so i am giving only b12 and uh, i am asking the body to generate more uh, blood cells what will happen folic acid also needed for folic the folic acid also you required for, for that the So what will happen? From where the folic acid will be taken for that? Uh, it will be taken from the nervous, nervous tissue. tissue. So what will happen to the nerves? Again, so uh, the, 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 the quantity of your folic acid in your body is very very limited. Okay, very small amount. Comparing with B12, it is only very small amount. And if that is utilized for blood production by you giving your B12 injection, there will be a drastic reduction of folic acid. in the central nervous system that creates more problems okay and that problems are not reversible after some time still same like b12 but more severe problems can occur so it is always better to give folic acid we no need to check the folic acid for uh, for all the patient if b12 deficiency is there along with b12 you just give folic acid that is enough okay so that that also can be corrected most of these patients can have associated folic acid deficiency also okay what happened to this patient afterwards uh, the patient after 3 4 days the symptoms symptomatically improved okay. and the patient recently came for review also okay so should we give blood transfusion for this patients what are the indications for blood transfusion in emergency room uh, absolute indication if there is significant blood loss so during here the fo- it is only for should we give Mm, yes, the sir. patient is not in congestive cardiac the failure. Patient is not in failure. Patient is not having coronary artery disease. Patient is not pregnant. Patient is not having any features because of anemia. You no need to transfuse at all. You just correct the problem. Within forty eight hours, it will start seeing start seeing the blood is increasing. Okay, then no need avoid transfusion. What are the problems of transfusion? Fluid overload. Fluid overload. Yes. Suppose you transfuse in this patient. Uh, blood what all things you can anticipate oh, one is fluid overload we need to need mm. give a diuretics along with that okay then transfusion reactions can be this okay then you tell all the transfusion problems why we are worried about transfusion oh, you can just give transfusion and correct this anemia why we are not giving It's always good for the patient, but sometimes it can produce adverse effects. That's why we are avoiding all these things. What are the adverse effects? One year told transition reaction. Transition reaction is a big chapter. What are the transition reactions you see? Trialy. What is trialy? What is trialy and trico? Trialy is what? Transition reaction associated huh? lung injuries. Lung injury. Trico. Circulatory order. Circulatory order. It's same. Mm-hmm. Both are same. One is lung injury. It is like ARDS. Other one is circulatory overload. That also produces pulmonary edema. Okay. Clinically, both will be similar. Okay. Only time time gap is different. The trico is immediate effect. Okay. Patient go to pulmonary edema. Most of these chronic anemia patients, if you don't give lasix and transfuse, they definitely develop pulmonary edema. So uh, s- since uh, there is no since there is no urgency we no need to transfuse at all we can wait for the response okay so that's why we have not transfused only b12 and folic acid will be enough should we give a, a iron for this patient no sir i was and if it is normal no need to trans, uh, give iron uh, injection okay but if you want to have a better effect because these patients can have a normal iron but when you are transfusing sorry when you are giving b12 folic acid and the blood production is very rapid this patient slowly develop iron deficiency anemia also so if the patient is not having very high iron uh, we can even give iron also for this patient so the response will be more rapid that's all okay anything else you want to add okay
Thank you. Thanks.